What's up, wrestling fans? It's the Emerald Enthusiast coming at you with another action figure unboxing. This time I'm taking a look at the Mattel WWE Elite Greatest Hits Collection figure of The Undertaker. Let's have a quick look at the packaging. We get a studio shot of Undertaker on the side. As you can see, this one is not in great shape. We get an action shot of Undertaker on the back. Here are the other wrestlers who have figures in this wave. There's a brief bio of The Undertaker. Mattel did an adequate job with the packaging here. You can see the figure for the most part. Had the WWE logo been a little smaller, I think I would have liked the packaging even better. But with all that being said, now it's time to bust this figure out of the package and see what's inside. And here we see the dead man himself out of the package and ready to rumble. This figure is definitely a mixed bag. The accessories are basic and the figure has some considerable articulation issues. Nonetheless, it is still an eye-catching figure. So let's take a closer look at the loose details now. Undertaker is clad in black MMA gloves, a black top, and black tights with white and red demon designs on the thighs. Here's a closer look at these creatures on the sides of his tights. This is definitely not a classic Undertaker look. However, these designs do add a splash of color to the figure. Overall, I think the composition of this figure is excellent. However, I do think that the torso is just slightly too small for the Undertaker. I have to give Mattel credit here for a well done head sculpt. You can definitely see the likeness of the Undertaker here. Let's have a look at articulation now. The ankles on my figure are very tight. It does have some pivoting. Let's see if I can get this foot to move back. There we go. There's also swiveling at the top of the boots. Double jointed knees, so you can get the figure into a running pose. He has the quadricep swivel, although using it makes the design look weird. You can only get him to kick forward this far. The hips feel really tight to me. And that's on both legs. I can feel the resistance when I do this with the figure. The articulation out to the sides is better. I think that's adequate, although you can't get him to step back at all with either leg, and that's unfortunate. The figure has the waist pivoting. You can get him to rock back just a little, and you can get him to crunch forward that far. The figure has rotation at both of the wrists. He has double jointed elbows, and that allows you to articulate his arm to this degree, so I'm thankful for that. He has the bicep swivel on both of the arms. Unfortunately, my figure has one very tight shoulder joint, so I may have to work with that to get it to loosen up although I can do a 360 with the shoulder. The head moves from side to side. Be careful with the hair. He looks up a little and down just a little, although there is more head tilting than I thought there would be. Here is the figure with the alternate set of hands. As you can see, they're not that different. One set is just more open than the other. A word of warning about the jacket, it's a very stiff material, it's not soft goods, so it wasn't the easiest thing to get off of the figure. Be careful when you're taking it off and putting it back on so you don't do damage to the arms. I hope you have enjoyed this review, if so, please like and subscribe, and please, Tell all of your friends about this channel. I would certainly appreciate it. And I'll be back with more action figure related content soon. But until we meet again, this has been the Emerald Enthusiast, and thanks for watching.